Hi everybody, it's Rob Cosman, and this video I'm going to do something a little bit different. Um, I want to talk about corporate credit cards for Amazon sellers. Now, this can apply to obviously a lot of other businesses, but particularly this is big for Amazon sellers or anybody who is actually buying physical goods, um, because chances are you're using credit cards quite a bit and you're buying a lot of stuff. So what usually comes up is when people are switching from a sole proprietor to a corporation um, I get the question okay so what do I do about my credit cards and bank accounts and, and things like that when you switch from a sole prop to a corp everything is should be different you know the the corporation is its own separate entity and it should have its own bank accounts it should have its own credit cards and uh, everything should be separate it's like a its own separate being I mean the sole proprietor is you so if you're making money as yourself and you report it on your own personal income taxes whereas a corporation has a corporate return and everything should be totally separate so at the very minimum you definitely need to go out and get a, a separate bank account um, for the corporation you don't want to start mixing those things you know the, the, the reality is you are you know quite often people do end up you know as a shareholder as an owner of the corporation they incur some expenses for it and you know use their own money for a bit and you know like there is some some issues there but you you know you want to try to make sure that you don't blur that line very often you know that the, the corporation is kind of its own being an entity and it has its own transactions and everything is kind of done in that bank account um, and the other thing that comes in is the credit cards so you know when you when you start out as a new corporation um, you've, you've got nothing I mean you, as soon as you've incorporated you get your documents and then you got to go set up you got to go meet your bank or figure out if you're gonna find a new bank or you know, use an existing bank but get your corporate bank account set up and then the next thing you want to do is get credit cards um, you know, I always recommend getting corporate credit cards right away as soon as you, you know, incorporate. I mean, you know, it's going to take time to build up um, trust and rapport. You know, most uh, Amazon sellers aren't big corporations that aren't, you know, having reporting going into Dun & Bradstreet to get a credit rating for their corporation. You know, what happens is when you first start, that corporation's brand new and no one's going to lend any money. So usually what happens is a bank or whoever looks at your own personal credit rating and will use that to determine, you know, what loan, if at all, of a credit card they should give you. So what I suggest is as soon as you start that you know when you set up that bank account ask the banker at that time if you're talking to someone say hey you know can I get a corporate credit card for that company usually that comes with a personal guarantee um, and quite often it's just a small amount say it's like five grand but at least you've got something to start with and the point is you want to start as early as you can because you want to get the increases you know like you want to develop that relationship you want to use it quickly and pay it off and make the payments on time so the bank looks at you and says okay great you're a good credit risk so you can start asking for increases um, you know some places will actually give you increases but at least if you start early right away then you know things will get rolling and you can start building up the track record you know credit card gives you a 30 40 days let's say to you know pay it off um, depending on when your statement period is so it's great to you know like help with your cash flow and you know keep track of things a lot easier especially if you're using QuickBooks online or anything you just hook up your credit cards and it'll import you know the transactions and that's kind of half the battle of course you get you know depending on what you end up doing and what kind of cards you actually get I mean then you can get points and benefits and uh, you know different things like that but I'll, I'll get into it so um, first when you first start that corporation get whatever you can you know get from the bank and I also recommend getting from American Express okay so American Express has a couple cards they have a really good business one that's uh, an Amex Platinum uh, I'm gonna put a link below the video that's an affiliate link if you sign up you'll get a bunch of extra points and I'll get a few points for it um, for me referring someone so instead of the regular sign up bonus it'll like kinda of double it as long as you're spending it what I like about Amex is they'll look at your personal credit and they'll make a decision on giving you uh, you know credit to start and they don't necessarily give you a limit you know it's kind of a purchasing card they'll just let you kind of keep buying and as long as you're kind of paying it off and staying on top of it um, it'll go now I've had clients um, I haven't personally yet but I've had clients that you know rack it up pretty high and then they get a call saying okay we, we need you to make a payment um, you know even though the date hasn't closed but they'll still give them you know a little bit more leash now that's dangerous if you're terrible with money management but if you're good and you need that credit then uh, you know that could be pretty pretty helpful especially going into Q4 so now 
changing gears a bit when you start off with a corporation you should go and get the credit cards get a credit card in the corporate credit card corporate company name so if that's a number company or if that's bills crazy deals inc whatever it is open that up start building the credit and that'll keep the credit within that that company so you know it's in the company's name and it'll show up on the balance sheet as a liability and um, you know everything's separate now realistically when everybody starts out you know if you're doing forty fifty thousand dollars in purchases a month you're not going to get a credit on a brand new corporation so realistically yes are people still going to end up using their own personal credit card yeah they are is it ideal no it's not but you know if you've only got ten thousand dollar limit in corporate credit card and you've got fifty thousand dollars in your personal and you want to keep the inventory moving and turning over well you need that buying power still so unfortunately it's not ideal but still lots of people do it because realistically you need to buy stuff and you need credit to do it so unless you want to prepay your credit cards you know huge and keep paying them every you know a couple days then that's what people tend to do now will that hold up if you get a review for CRA and stuff yeah it often does but you know again it's not perfect you know the ideal world would be everything goes through and you put on your corporate credit card and it gets paid off by your corporate bank account and it gets paid from the payments in Amazon you know from the corporate like everything just stays at the corporate and the only money that will move out from the shareholders would be like dividend payments or salaries now realistically when you're first starting out you're dumping a bunch of money into your new corporation to buy inventory you're paying your personal credit card so it can get messy but if you can kind of keep everything you know, in one in the corporate name, it's, it's going to be better. Um, so, second part. Who do you ask? Um, your bank or whichever bank you've started with. You know, some people use the corporation as an opportunity, you know, if they don't like their current bank to make a jump. You know, people that have like kind of no frills banks, you know, uh, like Tangerine and things like that. Now's the time, you know, if you have a, a you want to open a corporate account. Go find a real Schedule 1, you know, RBC, TD, uh, BMO, you know, those guys. I mean, that, that's what you're going to need, and you're going to need a banker because, you know, you need to talk to someone who can understand your business and, you know, kind of convince them a bit, like, you know, this is what I'm doing, and, you know, give me a little bit more credit versus just some guy in a, or woman in a call center that, you know, is just typing in a couple numbers and, oh, yeah, you get no credit. You, you want a little bit of a relationship, you know, now those banks usually have some bank fees, of course, but now's the time to, you know, pay a little bit of bank fees because you're also, you know, going to be asking for line of credit, credit increases, things like that, if you want to grow your Amazon FBA business. Okay, so um, the other thing is, oh, um, the ownership matches. I like this. Well, we'll talk about the credit limits. As I said, when you first start out, it'll be small. Don't be afraid to ask for them. Sometimes you'll get them. Like I, every once in a while, I get an email just says, hey, we want to give you an extra $5,000. Do you want it? Click this button. And you're like, sure, not a problem. They keep giving it to me. Now, if I want it, you know, I kind of got to call up sometimes and go through it, answer some new questions. Um, sometimes they want to see, you know, business statements and, and things like that. So if you know you do your year-end taxes, that's probably the best time to ask for a credit increase because you got up-to-date financials and you can say, hey, can you increase it? The other thing that I really like, and I, I call it the ownership matches. So if you ever have problems and issues with either CRA or Amazon with like receipts and things like that and providing, you know, support for inauthentic claims or receipts for GST, HST, stuff like that, it, you kind of get the, the match, right? Because you'd be able to show, okay, here's my purchase from walmart.ca. It was, here's the receipt. Here's the credit card, the last four digits. You see that matches the last four digits on my company bank account, and here it is in the company statement. So, you know, if CRA was to go the other way and say, okay, I want to see your claiming a HST refund or GST refund for this Walmart purchase, show me the receipt for it. Well, here's the receipt. You know, the question they might have is, how do I know that's business and not personal? Instead of going and showing them, okay, here's where I ultimately sold it through, you know, an order invoice or whatnot, you're just like, look, here, see, I charged it on the corporate credit card, like it's corporate, and I ultimately resold it. Again, just trying to get more, you know, you want to try to keep everything as much as you can in the corporate name and, you know, separate from the shareholders. You know, do the lines cross? Yes, but, you know, as much as you can, um, try to keep them separate. So, realistically, 
everybody's still going to use some of their own cash and their own credit cards to begin with. Yes, you can sync them up and you know record all those transactions, but at the end of the day, those corporate, those personal credit cards will rest with you in your hands, so they're not on your balance sheet for your corporation. They're still um, in your own, so that would kind of be a shareholder account. But you know, I always just recommend go and get something at the start. You know, some people get scared off. They're like, "Well, do I really need another credit card?" Yeah, you do because it's a totally separate entity. It's a corporation now, and yeah, pay you know the the couple hundred dollar annual fee, get some cool benefits from you know the credit card, but start to build that relationship with either Amex or your bank because you know you're not. It's going to be very difficult to get a credit score for your corporation, just the nature of this business. So if you can you know, rely on past history and your ability to charge and pay it off, then that should go a long ways and should enable you to get uh, additional credit. So again, I like the Amex. I've got it. A bunch of my clients have it. Um, I always recommend try your local bank, whichever bank you're working with, because they can see how much money's in your bank account, so they feel a little bit better about that. And grab an Amex and, you know, try to get the uh, Platinum Express. If you sign up, use my link, you get a bunch of extra points. Um, on your first few purchases. If you end up calling, uh, sometimes they'll try to tell you that those are for large corporations and other weird things like that. That's not true. You know, you can apply and they'll look at your current one. If you actually have a current Amex, it's even better. It's easier because they'll just look at that and look at your credit score and, you know, your relationship with American Express. Um, if not, they'll pull your credit score and you just fill in some information about what your income is and whatnot. But uh, generally, you know, knock on wood, you should be able to get approved and uh, get using it. You know, it's one thing to get it. It's another thing to actually use it and start buying all your as much inventory as you can on it and getting away from using your personal credit cards. Hope that helps and uh, talk to you guys soon.